and this is Super Eagles International. I was part of the 20 man, 23 man squad that went for the World Cup. Okay, yeah, we have seen me one call here live. Let's send a request for Simi one call. Simi one call. Hello, Simi. Hello. Yeah, uh, Mr. Jetsman, I just joined in. We're having Simi, Simi on to Chuku Wanko. Um, he plays for Sierra B. Sled, um, from Tony, and he's a Super Eagles International. Simi, you're welcome. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm doing well. So, um, we all know that Italy is one of the major states of the global pandemic. So how is the mood in your location and how are you how have you been keeping up? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately we are we are the center of the epic problem, but you know, God has been good. We're trying to stay safe and uh, play our part as much as we can. So it's been a crazy moment, but I think Sometime soon, by the grace of God, things will get better. Okay. So, um, let's start with the journey. Uh, what prompted you to play football and how did it all start? Yeah, it started for, for me, it started just like every other kid back home, you know, all the way from from my home, playing at, and on the streets, very young, with my friends, you know, enjoying myself, and then along the line, the passion began to grow. Uh, and uh, it's been the same for me all, all along, you know, going through the challenges up and down. But it, for me, you can't just complete the phone going up. Then we made a choice of becoming a professional, and then we pursued it with everything we have. So my journey has just been good, just like every other player out there. Yeah, so guys, um, we are just joining in. We have Simon to Chukwuanko, um, Super Eagles International. If you have any question for him, I just drop it on the comments um, section over here. So yeah, um, so what were the obstacles that you faced at your early stage of your career, and how did you manage to overcome all this? Uh, I think about challenges. I think in everything we do in life, there's always challenges. Uh, it's all part of being successful in everything you do. No matter your field, you have to face things, you know. It's about the process. So I don't see mine as challenges. I see them as a normal process that I have to go through to get to where I am. And I continue to do this every day because I still have to, I still have where I'm going, you know. As long as your life and you're competing in this game, there's always something to play for. So I'm still, you know, I'm still facing, going through the process, getting better every day. It's just about waiting for the right opportunity and, then clearly I was ready when the opportunity came calling for me to move over to Europe. So the process has been good. It's been difficult, but it's just like every other thing in life. You know, you just have to, if it's easy, then there's not much you're doing. So I think uh, the process has been good and difficult, but I'm proud of what I've done. Yeah, so guys, um, Simon Wanko was called up to the national team. Um and he made his first international debut in the 1 1 draw against DRC Congo. In, and in June 2018, he was called, he was named in the Nigeria Final 23 man squad for the 2018 World Cup in Russia. So, yeah, um, how was the feeling when you got your first call up and eventually making it to the World Cup? Yeah, it's, it was special. You know, for me, playing the national team has been one of my biggest dreams. One of the reasons I started to play football as a professional and uh, being able to achieve that was something special for me. And then finding myself at the biggest stage of world football or everything in sports, you know, the World Cup, was like the icing on the cake, you know, in a, in a moment where you are just like living your dream and then you have a chance to be at the World Cup as well. For me, it was it was really huge. It was really huge. The feeling was fantastic for me, and I I was just lucky that I can say that I lived my dream. You know, people have dreams and die without achieving it. People have dreams and then can never get there. But my dreams, I got to my dreams and I lived it, and I enjoyed every bit of it. So it was a fantastic experience for me. Yeah. 
So guys, um, if you're just joining me, please drop your question for um, Simeon to go on for. And yeah, so um, it was it broke into the news. There's one that when your name is mentioned, we remember that wonderful bicycle kick. Uh, it's called against Juventus. I guess the yeah. number one keeper apparently, uh, Schlesi. I uh, remember that was one of the most glorious moments in football. All the blogs were taking it, Simeon Wanko, Simeon Wanko. So apart from that, what other memory, what other glorious memory do you have to share with us? Yeah, like I just said now, my very first game in Port Harcourt against Congo, the national team, I think is, it will remain the most memorable moment for me, you know. Yeah. Scoring a goal is just part of his uh, striker's DNA. One word or the other, you end up scoring goals. Some goals may be special, some may be more important than others. Maybe a tap-in can be the most important goal of your life because it helps you win something or do something great. But, yeah, the goal against Juventus was beautiful. Against a very huge opponent, you know, mm-hmm. in a difficult league. Yeah, it's really, really important for me at that stage. And it opened doors for me to get to places I, I went, went to at the time. And it took me, you know, to the greatest moment of my life, which is playing for the national team. So I think the best thing that happened to me was that day in uh, Port Harcourt. You know, it was special for me. And I will always talk about it because it was a special moment for me. Yeah, so um, apart, we are not, everyone knew you as a footballer. And you are always training to be fit, to play in matches. So apart from playing football, what do you do to relax what do you do to relax and unwind? Nothing really. I just I take my time off with my family now. You know, we have a little time to spend with family because we're already on the move, trainings, then travels and games and everything. So all I try to do is the little time I find myself free, I try as much as I can to spend it with my family because they're also a big part of my life. So I dedicate that particularly every time I have free to them because... During the year, you have little time with them, so I think it's, it's important, you know, to spend as much as I can with them when I get the time. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. before so see, before any game, before you play a game, uh, what yeah. do you do? What do you do? Do you listen to music or you pray or what? What do you do before a game? Yeah, yeah. M- music, hundred percent. You know, it's like uh, what do I, how do I call it? It's like something that all footballers do. Because we all have our headphones, you know, concentration time, try to be on your own, you know, go into your inner self, listen to some good music, take a walk and stuff like that. So all I do is put my headphones on, listen to some music and then, you know, put my head in the game because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing for us to do that day. We just have to go and have fun. So the more relaxed you are, the better for you. Yeah, so speaking about music, uh what kind of music do you like? What, what, what are the artists are you feeling right now in Nigeria? <laughs> well, I'm a huge fan of whiskey, to be honest. I'm a huge fan of whiskey, the video, yeah. uh, Fino, you know. Nigeria is blessed. Yes. Olamide. Nigeria is super blessed with so many talents, you know. So I'm not like. So I let me put you. So what, what are the five songs, five songs you are listening to now, your playlist? Okay, I think the last song I played now was uh, Adura from Terry G. Okay, wow. Uh, yeah, then... So what uh, other songs? Uh, Whiskey's Joro is on my playlist as well. It's like on my top five now. Joro from Whiskey. Uh, David and Reminis. Daddy Mio. Uh, Daddy Mio, uh, it's inspirational song. Yeah, that's a huge song as well. Uh, I have been listening to lately. I listen a lot to Flavor Scan. I don't want it now for the COVID uh, response. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know these are huge, huge songs. That's right. So yeah, uh, I just saw Joel Ubi join us live. Uh, Joel Ubi, shout out to Joel Ubi, also Nigeria international. So yeah, um, I got you. So guys, we are just joining. <laughs> so guys, I'm just joining in. Uh, this is Simon Wanko. We all know him as a Nigeria footballer. We all know him as a footballer. But apart from football, he's also a philanthropist. Uh, he's been giving back to the society through his foundation called TNF. 
Officially, sometime I think 2017, it was registered officially with ECAC. If I'm not wrong, yes. Mm-hmm. But we've been doing so many things. You know, I'm not a super noisy person. Like I don't put everything out for people to see. I play my cards close to my chest. The important thing for me is that I I have my inner peace and I do things I want to do. You know. So we've been doing a lot of things, even with the registration, even with the Instagram page and. Not everything has been going out there because I choose to keep everything uh, on the low. You know, I don't like uh, that's me. It's not trying to say that people can put out what they want to, but me personally, I try to keep my things away from the media as much as I can. Maybe yeah. to get to a stage where, or once in a while, yes, we can show what we've done. But the foundation has been there. TNF has been there. The strategy is simple. H E S strategy. We work. We work on education. We work on health, education, and sports. These are the three places I concentrate on, you know. We do a couple of things on the edu- uh, health sector, try to reach out to the people who need medical assistance and help them sort their bills and stuff like that. Now, with the COVID stuff, we made sure we made some masks available for hospital uh, workers, uh, especially. Especially uh, most uh, hospital workers, you know, because they're the ones who are the frontliners in the battle and still they, they don't have what they need to protect themselves. So we made it That's possible good. for them to have that. Try to get some food that across to people in our areas and but you know it's just part of the things we all have to do what we have to do. Uh, nobody has to That's take glory for helping somebody. You just have to do it because you can. Maybe tomorrow I'll be the one needing the help. So I mean it's nothing special. Yeah, I think once again you did an applause for that. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. You. Uh, do you do you have support from friends or corporate organization or the foundation? No, no. Actually, it's my. You can see my name is there. Everything has been done on, on myself. Like it's something I do for my, from the little things I can put together for people to to also have a smile on their face. I sponsor yeah. it totally, hundred percent from my post. So up to now, nobody has. Or anything, but of course, who knows tomorrow? Maybe we can reach out that's to people who want to do something bigger. Uh, that's really nice and encouraging. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I'm um, still on the foundation. Uh, I saw a post when, when you went where to where it all started. You went to like, I think from a football academy and you gave back, you gave back to them. That was last, that was 2019. I think that was last year, July. Which one? Uh, you posted it, or uh, you went? You say you went back to where it all started to football academy. So how okay. how was okay, it? Yeah. So how was it uh, meeting young young Nigerians that uh, that want to be professionals? I'm thinking that years back you were like them. Yeah, well, it's really good. You know, it's part of the strategy, like I just said, uh, health, education, and sports. You know, anytime I come home, I try to do something. I try to do something, you know, try to reach out to younger kids playing football as well. Once in a while, you know, go play with them. You know, if, if you can help them out with their football shoes, JCs, some good words of advice and encouragement, stuff like this. The little ones we can, you know, it was really good. Getting back to, for me, I had to, I always go back there every time I'm, I'm in Nigeria. At least once or twice, I always step through there because for me, Everything started there, and I can believe. I still believe that so many of the kids there will still do the same thing that I did. They will still have to climb through the same ladder I, I climbed. So I think my presence sometimes will be good for them. You know, they have to know that somebody who has climbed up the ladder is close by, and that I'm always, always there for them if they need any help or any hand. So you know, it's always special for me to be in the midst. I feel so comfortable, like you know, I feel at home. So for me, it's something I do always, and I will continue to do it. Oh, that's what, so the the academy that I serve from where is it located? In Onitsha. Onitsha. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Okay. So guys, we are, yeah. So guys, we are just joining in. Uh, we have Simon Wampo with us. Um, if you have any question for him, just drop it on the comments section and mm-hmm. ask him any question. 
So yeah, um, so can you tell, tell us something more interesting about you that we don't know, that you would like us to know? <laughs> is, there, is there anything interesting in our life? <laughs> <laughs> I think the most interesting thing we do is when we go down the beach to play and make people happy. I think that's the most interesting thing about our lives because apart from that, it's all about work, training, free time, stay home, rest. I'm a very reserved person. I don't I don't do much. You know, I yeah. try to stay close, like more or less an introvert sometimes, but what is it special about? I think one of the things I do love to do or I love to see around me is like people smiling always, you know. Maybe it's one of the reasons why I put up my, I had to start my foundation, you know, to try and share as much smile around as possible, you know, because people need to be smiling more than than we do these days. So I think one of the few things I love doing is if you're around me, you just have to keep smiling because if you don't smile on your own, I'm not, I have to make you smile because you have to smile. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so so what, what are your hobbies? What, what are your hobbies? Apart from football. Now, my most important hobby now, apart from football, now is playing with my daughter. I just run around the house with her. Because, you know, I'm having a time of my life. Uh, much. I've yeah. never had this long time with my daughter since she was born. So, it's my biggest hobby now. And what else do I do? I'm not so much into video games these days because it's been. I think I played I played so much when I was younger that now I don't want to play again. Yeah. <laughs> now you can't yeah, maybe one day when I played when I was younger, it will last me for another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so now I just try to read, yeah, so, um, maybe read some books and, and chill. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so, so from, your, from your experience playing abroad, how do you think we can improve games and help upcoming stars in Nigeria? Uh, that's a big one. That's a big one. It's a question everybody has been shying away from. And nobody's doing anything, you know. People don't. People don't. It's, it's easy to criticize, you know. People at the top when they're trying to make decisions, you know. But people on the grassroots have to play a part as well. People yes. on the grassroots have to play a part as well. It's not an easy thing. It will take a while, you know. People have to understand that for football to work, you need the administrators, you need the football players, you need the fans. All of them plays a part in it. So I think we have to start on the grassroots level, creating conditions that will make these players, you know, grow the passion. And then the structures has to be in place. We have to have good yeah. pitches. We have to have training pitches. You know, we have to have proper settings that will guarantee people the job fun. Because it's fun when you play from, from the street and you find yourself in a good structure to play. You know, that jump... Yeah is important for you. But when you continue to play in the streets and then continue to play in, in a very bad pitch area and then the conditions are not there, lots of people tend to lose interest in what they're doing. So it's very, very important for us to work on the structures. It's very important for us to work on the structures and then create an enabling environment for young players to grow. Then I think the most important thing is to start from the scratch on the grassroots level That's before we go, go up. Yeah. Yeah, so guys, um, if you have any question for him, you can drop it. I'm seeing a lot of questions here, but drop your question in English. I'm not understanding this <laughs> one here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, um, Simi, do you have plans to go into coaching after retirement? Uh, for now, I don't actually know what I'm going to do. Huh? It's a question that I will still take time to. It's still a question that I will still take time for to answer. But you never know. You know, in the next years, I think I will be having an idea, more or less, what I will be doing. But for now, I'm 100 concentrated in playing football. We will see as time goes on. So, uh, do you have any other interest outside football after um, retirement? Not really much. My life is football. Maybe I will stay in the game or even when I'm done playing. <laughs> it's most likely that I will stay in the game, but I don't know on which role or what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it. You know, all I can do now is enjoy my play, active playing days first, and then maybe when I'm close to the end, I will start making better plans. So, so that's true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, 
Yeah, Simi, you are, you are quite an inspiration and a blessing to many young Nigerians. Um, Thank you. So what, what advice do you have for a younger player that wants to play in Europe? I think the most important thing I tell every young kid out there every time is, first of all, you have to be yourself. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Because football is all about the fun. And at a stage, you have at to stage, forget, you know, you just have to forget about the big dreams. Yeah, we are led, led by our dreams, yeah? But you have to focus on the small pitch you're playing in, on the street. You have to enjoy what you're doing there presently. Enhance yourself. Grow. Keep growing from that. You know, don't mold yourself on somebody else. Be yourself. If you're good with something, develop it. Enjoy yourself, because at the end of the day, we're all different people, different players. So the most important thing is for everybody to have fun, grow in your own way, at your own pace. Of course, you have your dreams, you have your reference, you have your idols you look up to. Get the motivation you need there, but don't lose that fun, you know. Don't lose that moment of happiness there when you play football. Stick to it and then take it one step at a time. You can't jump from zero to hundred. You have to take it one step at a time and go through the process. And then in time, you get your own chance. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, thank you for, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us today. Um, so what are your final words to everyone watching? You know, at this moment of difficulty, all I can pray and tell everybody is to, first of all, stay home. Because it's a difficult moment. It's a global pandemic. We all have to stay home and respect the rules and be safe. But at the end of the day, if you're not safe, then there's nothing we're talking about. I want everybody to respect the rules, be safe, and we keep praying for the doctors and the nurses for everything they're doing. So they're the ones fighting for us. So we have to pray for them always. Yeah, so um, thank you. So thank you very much for joining us. And we hope uh, when next, after this pandemic, when next in Nigeria, you visit us live in our studio to talk more. Okay, yeah. of course, thank of course. So uh, on behalf of Sports so on behalf of Sports City, thank you for today. And we wish you more glories. And we hope um, the, the pandemic will stop and you guys will play and go to the CIA. And we all will see the Simi we love. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Ciao. Ciao. Uh, thank you.